Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. As I said about 10 seconds ago before Simon rang me to check on my movements. Um, today's a bank holiday here, but over this long weekend, we've had a flood of answers to the Jewels of Osiris, the incredible treasure hunt that is running on Patreon. Um, Demono has created a mixture of a, a mystery hunt and a Sudoku hunt, and you do very almost very literally have to find treasure in it. And uh, it's it's proved incredibly popular, very unsurprisingly. The comments are so good. Um, it's not absolutely easy to get through every transition from, from one document to another, but people are loving it when they do it. And uh, there's always a bit of help on Patreon available, uh, on Discord available for those who get stuck, I think. So anyway, do check that out. Join us on Patreon if you haven't already. That'll to get your name on the on the eventual scroll of honor for successful solvers you will uh, have to enter an answer by the 20th um of may so check it out because it's good um also check out our apps because they're good exactly the same story they're all available on the links under the video um and oh I sh yeah i didn't mention this puzzle we'll get to that in a moment now i'm nearly done mentioning other things like sven sudoku pad and the discord server and the catalog of our puzzles all on the links under the video and the first link will be to this puzzle this puzzle is this puzzle confuses me it's called allergic reaction it's by allergem and it makes me more than ever want to say allergen as allergem's name and i don't know if allergem's name is based on Allergen or whether the similarity of that has caused him to make the puzzle called Allergic Reaction today. I don't know. Anyway, it, it makes me more likely than ever to typo his name. Uh, normal Sudoku rules apply in this, so we're going to, as usual, be putting one to nine in every row, column, and three by three box. Digits on a thermometer increase from bulb to tip. So they must get bigger as we go along the thermos from the round bit. The orange circle, there's only one of them, contains an odd digit. Now, here's the kicker. We can't forget this rule as I did in yesterday's video for so long. No, the day before. But we, we can't forget that no orthogonally adjacent pairs of di pair of digits sums to 10. So those two don't sum to 10. Those two don't sum to 10, etc. There is, I mean, it's really interesting. I think Alajem said in the email that he had solved a puzzle by somebody um, in which there was no summing to five in that way allowable. And he thought that no summing to 10 might prove, might prove interesting in the right combination with some other simple rule set. And he thinks he's achieved it. So give it a try on the link under the video. I don't know what we're going to find as we go along here, but I'm keen to find out because Allergem has set a number of puzzles starting quite recently and they've all been brilliant. So really interested to see what's gonna go on. I'm gonna restart my clock now. You can try the puzzle yourself, but here we are. Let's get cracking. Um, hmm. I mean, right, well, Philip Newman and Clover introduced me to this new mechanism on Sven's software, where if you highlight one cell and hold it down on an, in a thermo puzzle, the machine finds all the thermos of the same length and highlights those cells. And that is gonna help with good lifting or putting in all the pencil marks on all of these five cell thermos. Now, all of these five cell thermos, no, I was gonna say rather ignorantly, they all have a five on, that's five cell Ren bands. Okay, what do we know? Right, let's look at what we found. Okay, we found there's no one or nine in those cells. So, ah, and one and nine add up to 10. So I'm not forgetting the extra rule. One and nine cannot be in they are in these three cells, but they can't be together. So that one is not one or nine, despite being an odd. One and nine have to be in these cells. That is now three, five, or seven, this odd orange digit. I presume it's orange in this puzzle because 
not because it's odd. We normally just have a grey circle for orange, but it might look like a thermo bulb. Um, oh, two is in one of those cells. Ah, bingo, right. Two is in one of those two cells. In Again, in this box. This seems to be the key box, unsurprisingly. It's quite full of info. Um, two is in one of those two cells in it. They're the only cells that can contain a two. Now, what that tells me is that wherever two is there, one is in one of these two. So actually, let's do a bit of pencil marking. Two is in one of those. That must mean one is in one of those two. Now, I'm pencil marking row one across boxes, which is a bit dangerous, but it immediately tells me that this cell is not a one. So that's the nine, and this is the one. Now, that means there's no one or nine on this thermo, so that gets quite constricted, either end of the possibilities. We can take one off now, and they're down to three possibilities or two degrees of freedom each. Eight in the column must be in one of those two cells. Seven must be in this box. Now, let's keep looking up here. Yes, eight is in exactly the same way as two is in one of those two cells up here. Eight can only be in these two. And that's going to push a nine into one of these. Now, what about this ten rule? Is that... Oh, it looks like it wants to operate on this. But the fact that 8 is in one of those cells does not mean necessarily that 7 is in one of these, because 7 could be in one of these. Actually, yeah, and the fact that 2 is in one of those doesn't mean 3 has to be in one of these to keep 7 out of that. That's a shame. I thought that was going to be quite interesting. Um, I mean, I'm not saying it's not interesting, I just don't quite understand what it's doing at the moment. Now... There's also 4, 6 to consider. 4, 6 can never be next to each other. Now, does that mean... No, it doesn't. It doesn't mean that 5 has to be on this thermo. I thought it might do. But 4 or 6 or 5 could be down here. What's going on down here? Let's have a look at this one. Right, we worked out 8 and 7. 8 is in one of those cells and 7 is in one of those. So 8 can't be here, nor can 7. And these have got quite restricted. And this is now 4, 5 or 6. So that's going to take 2 off the top of each of these sets. Is that right for the pencil marking? I think it is. So it has got quite constrained. This is interesting. Now, I mustn't forget the 10 rule. Oh, 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 here's an interesting fact about the 10 rule. Two can't be in one of those two cells because one of them is an eight. And therefore two in this column is definitely fixed here. A prob... Oh, hang on. I was going to say it probably doesn't do anything. But that stops 8 being in one of these cells by the 10 rule. Oh, this is fascinating, Allergen. What is going on here? Now, 8 isn't in one of those cells. So one of these is an 8. But the other... The other is not 7 now. Because the one of these that isn't 9 has to be 7 or lower. So one of these is 8, and the other one isn't 7. And now 7 is somewhere in this group of cells. And that will tell me that 3 is not in this one. I don't know which th of these 3 7 is. But if 3 was here, it would be next to one of those 7 possibilities. So that's not a 3. Now I wanted immediately to say that 3 must be here. But I can't say that because the reason 2 couldn't be down here was it would definitely be next to 8. If 3 was down here, it could avoid 7. And it couldn't. 
oh, we've determined seven is in one of these three cells. That could never be a seven. I'm sorry, I forgot this. Ah, oh, that is a definite five now, which is kind of what I thought it would be, but I hadn't, I really hadn't understood why. But sorry, the, the fact that we put seven in one of those three cells, which was one of the more simple deductions I made earlier, immediately took seven as a possibility out there. It was much harder to get three out, which I managed to do with great facility. Now, five there, that's really interesting. Look, five can't be on this thermo anymore, which is really slimming down in possibilities now. And in fact, oh no, it was, um, but four and six mustn't be next to each other. So one of these at the bottom has to be four or six now to stop them both appearing on the thermo next to each other. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, look at this. What is that next to? Well, it's not allowed to be next to another four or six. So that's a five. Everything is getting much more restricted. This puzzle is so neat. I, oh, I'm blown away. Look, that, that's now a four, six pair. We can fill in the rest of the column. Seven, eight, three. This is going to be doing all sorts of things. I'm just going to have to gradually work out what they are using the 10 rule and stuff. So we're left with this 4-6 pair in this crucial central column. What about up here? Has something happened here that I haven't understood? Probably. Where should I be looking next? Maybe I should look down here. This, this, this box seems to have become the cleanest and most helpful in, in many ways. Um, but there's no real possibilities anymore anywhere down here for one of these 10 sums. Oh, there is. Look, three can't go in one of those two cells. So three is in one of these two. And that means these don't include a three. Now the, oh, why did I think three had to be there? No, I didn't. Seven, eight, five, three. This can't be four or six. Not that interesting. Um, oh, seven and eight in this row now have to be over this side. Slightly interesting. I'm going to bother to pencil mark a bit of that. Seven in this box? No. Right, let's look at box two again. What's going on up here now? One of these is... These have become an eight and something lower, which is clearly even now. So seven's in one of these two. Six can't be in those anymore because the lower one of these is a six. And that must take something lower than six in these cells. So eight is always above seven. Now, six also, oh, if, if this is an eight, six pair, they, then we can't have a four here because the number lower than six can't be four or it would touch it. So if this is an 8-6 pair, that is a 7-3 pair, and this is a 4-2 pair. Oh, here's a thought that I could have had ages ago. Oh, that's very clever. One of these is a 2. So the other one couldn't be a 3. Now, I've managed to rule 3 out of that cell, but this one can't be a 3. And that's because if one of these is a two, that has a one on its circle. If you make the other one a three, what can that possibly have on its circle? You've used two and one. So three is not in either of those cells. And that means the only place for three in this box is now here. So that's the two, that's a one. We can take out those pencil marks, corner marks, call them what you will. Um, this is now, this could be three, four now. This has to be bigger than four or six. That is a seven. So then we finish off its thermo with eight, nine. This can't be eight, this can't be nine. Now there's a four, six pair there. So 
Is there something obvious here? This can't be a six, because that would have to have a four there, and they would touch. Still feel I'm missing something here, but I don't know. Maybe not. Now, nine has to be in one of those two cells. Let's have a look in this bottom box again. Or maybe, maybe I need to think about the middle box. Actually, seven and eight. Oh, seven and eight are both in these. So eight's in one of those two. Seven is somewhere on, not next to three on that side. Where's one? Don't know. Seven, eight, nine. Two and three. Ah, two is down here somewhere in one of those cells. Can't be next to eight. Right, this cell can't be four or six because it's next to a four or six. So by Sudoku, we're restricting that down to one or five. Which is a bit, feels a bit weird. I don't think I'm managing to approach this in a very logical way, but nonetheless, this is this is the path I'm bound on now, so I'll just carry on. Um, two, three, nine. What can this be? No, that can be... This can't be one, because it's next to nine. So it is four, five, or six. It's almost certainly the other one of four, six. Oh, this one, I think, has to be two or three. Look, it can't be seven, eight, five, nine. It can't be four or six because of that. Okay, it's one, two or three, and that's almost as helpful. Two or three would have given me a pair, but one, two, three gives me a triple in the row. So now I get four and six fixed. This is so clever. That's a nine. Now one can't be in this cell. This is now a one, two, three triple down in this box. That one can't be three and that one can't be two by the the nine, the ten rule. <laughs> Why am I calling it a nine rule now? Um, that finishes the box and this column... Oh no, we've got a four six pair though. That becomes a seven. This is an eight one pair. I don't think I've contravened the rule anywhere, but I still haven't determined these. Yes, I have. I've got a four here. That's a six. That's a four. Three on the circle. That's a six. That's a four. There we go. Now, I've got the one, two, three triple. So this is now a seven, eight, nine triple. Ooh, that's reducing the possibilities here quite dramatically. So let's say six, five, four. Five and three can't be a four because of that. This one can't be a four, so that's three or two, and that is just one or two. Is that all I get for that one? Maybe, maybe it is. Um, I just feel I've missed something. Oh, I'll tell you what, four is in one of those three cells, and that straight away says this can't be a six here. And that's huge. This can't be a six because it would be touching a four, which is illegal by the ten rule. So that's not a six. This is now five or four, and this can't be five anymore for the thermo rule. So we can suddenly fill in the rest of that thermo. Three, two, one. That sorts out the one eight pair. This is so interesting and clever. We might as well mark up this, because we might find something now. Three, six, or seven, but can't be seven, because this can't be eight. This is now four, five, or seven. And this is bigger, five, six, or eight. Well, it's not many possibilities. We need a one by Sudoku in one of those cells. Oh, where does nine go in this box? Not there by Sudoku and not there by the ten rule. So nine's in one of those two. And that's not a nine. Eight 
can't be there or there by Sudoku first and then the tens rule. So eight is up here and then it's down here somewhere. Yeah, let's just keep going thinking about this sort of thing. Or oh, maybe it peters out because the one and the two are the only definite digits there. Two. Two in this row. There's only one place for it because it mustn't be next to the eight. So that's a two. And one, one we knew is... A, oh, that means this can't be eight. So we get eight there. Not on the end of the thermo. That can't be seven. This can't be six and is definitely a three. And now we have a whole other digit. Two digits to play with because that three is telling us where the seven is in this box. It's got to be here. It mustn't be here next to the three. Uh, so we're going to get a seven over here. But it's also a three in its own right. Oh, which puts three somewhere up there. Not that exciting. Now this we've filled in nothing for. Two, seven, eight, three, six, one in its row. Can't be a nine. That's four or five, which forms a pair with that and gives us the nine in the row. Um, and the nine in the row below goes there, and this is now a six, seven pair. Nine, three, eight, two, seven. So up here. Now, this is very interesting. This cell can't be four or six because... Four and six have to be contained in these four cells, but they mustn't touch. So this one, which touches all of the other cells, can't be either of those. That is one or five. Hmm, four and six could be there and there, though, so it doesn't really limit this cell much. Oh, this is just fascinating. I'm really intrigued. I, I didn't think the n no adjacency adding up to 10 rule was going to be this interesting. It is absolutely fascinating what it does in the hands of an expert. Let's not mess around. Um, now, I don't know quite what we do. Oh, the three is looking down onto the thermo. That's what we do next. Two, one. That fixes this whole triple. Three, one, two. Now we've got things we can do. Two is in one of those cells. Three, ah, look, three is in one of these cells along with seven, but they have to be separated by a chaperone digit. So, so we know that they will be in those two. We actually know which way round they go. Um, sorry, I'm in the wrong mode. There we go, seven, three. Now, can we do something else with this T? We've got five, six, eight, nine. Oh, well, this one can't be six or eight. 8 by Sudoku, 6 by the 10 rule. That is 5 or 6. This can't be 9. I don't know, it's still very non-intuitive to me. There's a 1 in one of those two cells. 7, 3, 9, 8, 1. Now again... Can I rule six out of these cells? The answer is no, because it could be a six, four pair there. Oh, it can't. Right, I think I can rule six out of these cells, because it will either be next to four over here, or that would be a six, four pair, but then there'd be nowhere for two in the row. So... Six cannot be in those cells and must be here in row eight. That's really neat in its own right. And that's just a minor deduction at the end of this, towards the end of this brilliant puzzle. So we've got a one six there. This is a two four five triple. Now, there's no problems with them touching each other, except that four mustn't touch six. Oh, and one of... The, there is a definite six X wing going on here because this six seven pair and this one six pair will definitely use up the sixes for their rows and indeed their columns. And that means six in column eight has to be in one of those two cells. It also means this can't be a four. In fact, we've got a four five pair in this column already. This is a naked single. 
it sees that 4-5 pair and 2-3 in the column. It sees 1-9 in the box and a 6-7 pair. That is an 8. Uh, these two I've got highlighted are from 3-4-5 and it looks like only one of them can be a 3. So that one is 4 or 5. No, threes are all done. Eight. That can't be eight. So let's look up this column again. Four, five, two, three, eight. One has to be here in the column. That fixes six. This cell can't be a nine because it would be next to a one. Isn't this brilliant? Um, six, one, seven, three. That is where nine has to go in the box because it still can't be next to one. Now we've got 2, 4, 5, and 8 to place. 5 has to be in one of those. Ooh, okay, it's going to get interesting. 4 mustn't be next to the 6. And then 2 and 8 mustn't be next to each other. Mm, not sure. Okay, I'm just going to have to remember that 2 and 8 mustn't be next to each other, I suppose. Now, the 5 was in one of those two, so this can't be a 5. Let's just get rid of the corner marks. Um, let's have a look up this column. 1, 7, 8, 3, 4. We need a 2 in one of those two. 4, 5, 6. Now, this can only be... 2 or 5. It can't be a, a 4. Oh, we've got a 4 in the column. That's one good reason it can't be a 4. It's only 2, 5, 6 and 9 we're looking to place. Okay, I don't. that can't be a 9 because it's next to a 1. So the only place for 9 in the column is down here. Right, there was something going on there. Two, five, six, triple left. What about this five, eight? Nothing's next to a two. Have I missed something over here? Seven being next to three somewhere. Six. Oh, I've got that one. That's what I've missed. Big old, big old Sudoku digit. Um, seven is here. Eight is there now. What's going? Eight mustn't be next to two. So we get a 2 there. 6 mustn't be next to 4. So these are all suddenly resolved. Oh, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Even if you don't spot why it's beautiful at first, you come to it in the end. 4, 5, 8, triple. Um, I can't use the rule anymore on that, so I have to leave it. This one has become a 4. Then we have a 1, 5, 6, triple. 6 mustn't be next to 4. We're not quite finished. 5, 7 and 8. That is 5 or 8. The only place for 7 in the row is here. 3, 5, 7, 2, 1. There's a 2 there. So my pencil marking here was always pointlessly overdone. Is this definitely a 6? It is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're going to finish off now. That is a fantastic idea for a puzzle. 5, 8 pair, 3 and 4 here. 4, 3, 7, 1, 6, 2. That is a 5. That's a 9. That's an 8. Finish off 5 and 8. And then this last triple. What a fantastic thing. Oh, I love that. That is so clever. Um, little bit intricate to start with in box 2. And I don't, I don't think I really grasped the intricacies properly but it's a lovely elimination puzzle Simon wouldn't like it because of the good lifting or maybe he would just see through it a different way that, that that's more realistic but I loved it so that's perfect anyway thank you very much Alajem for sending that thank you as always for watching us on the channel do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already we do two videos a day and we love to bring them to you because they're so often as good as this. It's incredible. And I hope to see you again tomorrow. Thanks for watching and bye for now.